Welcome back to Lex Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, Hello. take that midweek break. That's right. We're going to talk about everything going on in the world of Floss, open source, Linux, and man, we got a gang of stuff to go over this week because uh, like <laughs> yesterday and even today, I think, Pedro, you had a like, wait, what moment? The people, what? <laughs> See, that's how he is uh, a lot of times, usually when tying his shoes. Um, no, we had G Plus closing down. We had Microsoft going open yeah, source with yeah. a bunch of stuff with their papers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of surprising and terrifying. Um, but, Pedro, what's been going on with you since last week? Anything fun and exciting? Uh, not really. I'm basically just going through my uh, completely uh, rampant collection of laptops. This is the X230 right here. That uh, I have now upgraded to 16 gigs of RAM, and I'm going to just make it a workhorse. Make it do everything that I would need to do at work, but on Linux. Because I want to present a certain case to a certain someone. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> Some people have stray pets, you have laptops. Um, yes. It's <laughs> Jill, outside of um, posting like some UFO alien pictures in our Discord earlier this week, what, what, yes. what, what's going on? Oh, yeah. So Monday at Community Hack Night at Riot Games, I showed some some people, including some of my students, uh, what tools to use to podcast under Linux. So that was pretty cool because I've got a, a few students who want to start some some of their own tech podcasts. And on Sunday, as Ben was saying, uh, because Steve Husband is a SpaceX fanboy, he knew when to go outside and look at the rocket launch. And it was spectacular. It was really, really beautiful. Um, uh, seeing the reflection of the light on on the uh, the fuel was really, really cool. It was big, beautiful in the sky. And this is the first time we had a, had a SpaceX launch that la that landed at Vandenberg. So it was clear for everyone to see. It was really cool. And a lot of a lot of people around here work at SpaceX. So there was a lot of cheering going on. So that was really cool. <laughs> that is pretty neat. It was interesting to see that in our Discord. I haven't been up to a whole yeah. lot. I'm getting ready, like pre-production, to do a video, speaking of podcasting, mm -hmm. uh, about how to clean your audio up, make it sound good, what does and what does not work. And apparently I'm going to be doing a guide on how to set up a X-Touch Compat because that's a new piece of kit we picked up to make life easier. And that's going to be fun because I'm horrible at doing those types of videos and it takes me like eight hours for a five minute video. It's hilarious. Um, let's get right into it since we're dragging a little bit. We want to get done quick today. Google, Google Plus, uh, Sky's Falling. This came out, uh, what, like two days ago, right? Yep. Yes. That was the announcement. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it's Google classic nuke it from orbit approach. I'm like, hey, there's a thing. It's uh, dead uh, now. <laughs> Goodbye. And it's kind of sad to see. Now, this follows a data yeah. breach that had been going on for a while. You can't really call it a data breach. It was a theoretical breach that allowed, mm -hmm. potentially could have allowed someone uh, access to information that you'd had set up in your profile. You know, not really private stuff, but like, you know, what what you like, your gender and all that fun stuff. Yeah. And guess what? I mean, would this affect anyone? Yes, because if you have a Google account, unfortunately, uh, you have a Google Plus account. And I don't say that negatively, but Google went really stupid back mm -hmm. in the day. Uh, made my life miserable because <laughs> it added a G Plus account. Then it made uh, you get ended up with like YouTube. I have YouTube accounts for mm. YouTube accounts. It's horrifying. Anyway, so instead of uh, the might have fixed it. We don't know, but uh, what is it? What do we get until July or August of next year? Yeah, uh, it so was 10, ten months. months. So yeah, August. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> five hundred. Yeah, five hundred thousand users were theoretically uh, at risk of having their like profile data made public, even if they had it set to private, because apps were basically there was an exploit that would allow an app to get access to that, even if you weren't allowing access to said app specifically. And that was the big one. And there were people saying, oh, Google didn't disclose that one. Yeah, Microsoft doesn't disclose the bugs that it finds if it fixes them and it doesn't really affect anyone. That's kind of how the industry goes. But of course, Google, you know, being what they are and they do like to hold other companies up for the uh, 90 day 
you either fix it or we disclose it thing. Well, they took a little bit of flack and, well, of course, Google+, Plus, the one social network I didn't hate, is uh, yeah. is collateral. <laughs> oh, well, first Google kills Google Wave, which I really loved, and now they killed Google+. Plus. It's so sad. I'm, I'm actually really depressed because this is really the best social network where all of us nerds and tech, tech, techs hang, hung out. And what was awesome about it is the post can be long format, very thoughtful discussions and intelligent discussions went on with the, within the community, and the picture sharing was wonderful. And that's something that's not quite as good on Twitter. No. So, yeah, which is really, really sad. But um, it seems that G Plus will be becoming an enterprise communications tool, a lot like Microsoft's Yammer. And I've known for years that the in in house at Google they use it as their their communication platform. So that kind of makes makes sense. But this was just really sad. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Um, G Plus was always us. We're mourning it. I mean, we still got a month left, but uh, we know it's going down. Mm -hmm. It was a great place because your your friends and family were not on it, unlike Facebook, yeah. unlike Twitter. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that was the big one. It's like, oh, look, people who actually have the same tastes that I do that mm -hmm. I don't really know. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. No, the 4,000 people. Uh, I'm going to yeah. miss you. But what you can do, uh, you can blame Civic for this. Uh, Mast.linuxgamecast.com. That name again is Mast.linuxgamecast.com. We have mm -hmm. a uh, deceased hairy elephant instance that you can join. <laughs> and uh, this is like the first time I've like really public. I've, I said it on G+, and people in Discord know. That's the thing. We're there. We're going to try it out probably for like a week and forget we have it. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Moving on. Thank you, Cybic. <laughs> yeah. Up next, we have Audacity version 2.3.0. Not a major release, but a pretty good uh, roundup of all the uh, the bug fixes and the whatnots that they've been introducing lately. Uh, they also have some new features. The punch and roll recording. Uh, pin playhead can now be repositioned by dragging. Play at speed can now be adjusted while playing. So that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's Audacity. Uh, Ven makes uh, religious use of Audacity uh, yes. for the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we all do here. And one of the, the things in this, uh, awesome things in this is release is that the improved saving of projects with a save lossless copy of project option, which allows you to make a backup of the project while you're still working on it, which is really awesome awesome unlike whereas before when you did save as it would close your project and i always found that pretty annoying so it's really nice to have that feature i think it's yeah. good um it's good to see it's updated and uh you can track down ppas for netly builds for this or you can build it yourself i'm sure it's already set up a what, what version are you at on solus uh 2.2.2 uh, 2. Mm -hmm. uh grandpa on, <laughs> <the times. laughs> it's an awesome piece it of will kit. be updated eventually yeah i mean this it's 90 bug fixes so that's good we use it yeah and it's to master our final product and it's good work it's open source and i'm glad we have it so i ran across something early last yeah, week did. and i was like wait a minute why was I not informed of this? And Pedro said, ah, sir, I do protest. Why was I not informed of this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, yeah, no, it's uh, it's Albert. It's a launcher uh, the same way that if you hit Alt-F2 in whatever this row, you get a TD tiny little box that lets you launch applications directly from there. Um, and this one is... Uh, very comprehensive. It has plugins uh, that extend their functionality beyond just, you know, launching applications. You get the calculator one, you get the Google one, you can even uh, feed whatever it is you want to search for into Wolfram Alpha, and it'll just spit out whichever, um, I don't know, formula, formula you're looking for. It's actually a really really nice launcher it's mm -hmm. very customizable uh it's very simple very tiny it's just a teeny tiny little bar that shows up in the middle of the screen it's really good i did not know that this one existed i had just been using the um default mate one and this one is so much better 
Yeah, I really, I've really been enjoying playing with this. Um, you can even launch VMs with it, which is really cool. And yep. um, search for files in your file manager, search Wikipedia, run Google Translate, and search the internet. And the best, one of the best features of all, you can use it to to log out or shut down your computer, mm -hmm. <laughs> which which is really really awesome. And uh, yeah, it's it's really a, a awesome utility. I wish I had known about this sooner myself. <laughs> yeah, it was a good surprise. I was like, wait a minute. Um, I didn't get a chance to build it. I saw that Wimpy had a PPA set up for it. It's like, oh, that's for the old version. I'm not going to mess with that. And um, some rando had another PPA. It's like, I don't even know this person. So <laughs> I might uh, probably later this week, I'm going to build it. Uh, have you played with it and enjoyed it, Pedro? Yes, yes, I have. Mm -hmm. uh, I started building it from sauce because it's like, yeah, that's probably not going to be in the repos. So it's like, okay, this uh, like this is a dependency. This is a dependency. I was installing dependencies, and then something caught my eye in the software center. It's like, oh, th there it is, and it's the most recent version. Huh. Okay, let's just install it from the repo then. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. I look forward to playing yeah. with it. I don't know if it's going to re does now <clears throat> from an understanding point of view, does it replace the launcher or no, it's completely no, separate. Uh -uh. You can set it yeah. to replace yeah, by just well, changing that, the, okay, uh, that's how I should rephrase yeah. it. Could you use it as a replacement yes. for a launcher? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just change the, um, the keyboard shortcut from launching the default one to Albert. Hmm. Good times. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's mm -hmm. Ubuntu news. Yes, oh, this is yes. awesome. The oh. The beta of Ubuntu 18.10 Cosmic Cuttlefish has been released for testing leading up to the final release on October 18th. So that's Next coming week. up very soon. <laughs> Yay, exciting. And what's really wonderful is this one features GNOME 3.30 as the default desktop, which includes patches fixing memory garbage collection, and it uses fewer system resources. Yes, like we have been talking about for a while. So we've been waiting yeah. for that. And the one thing that I found really cool about this release is that it's it's supposed to have faster installs and 10% faster booting with a new compression algorithm given to us by Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. The compressor is called uh, Z Standard and LZ4. And uh, that was really cool. That's that that shows how much Facebook has given back to the open source community. And um, I really love the new look and feel and of, of this new version. And the default wallpiper featuring the, the cuttlefish mascot is really cute. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was, I am still genuinely surprised at how uh, Canonical themselves seem to have changed. Uh, they've uh, lost a bit of that uh, not built here syndrome that they had for a while. And now they're not just adopting the uh, the Facebook compression algorithm. They're also adopting uh, the changes that Fedora made to the mm. kernel to optimize yes. battery life in laptops. So yes. that is very good to see, Canonical. Very good indeed. It's a shame that yeah. you decided to go with GNOME for the default version. But hey, no one's perfect. <laughs> you kids have fun with that because I'm just going to sit back way back here in this old what? crusty Tino <laughs> oh. LTS and wave at you as you go forward. Ben is and... being quiet. <laughs> Why? I don't oh, think Ben yeah. realized he was muted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So next we're going to talk about how to speed up your Ubuntu. And um, uh, this article, there's a really nice article about how, five ways to speed up Ubuntu. And um, one way is to reduce the boot time by, by altering grub configuration from sec 10 seconds to, to two, or I actually just use zero, <laughs> except on the computers that I want to multi-boot many different uh, Linux OSs. And I've actually, you know, um, been using a lot of these tricks for, for years. Um, and also, you know, getting rid of startup applications, heavy startup applications. So, but the be the the best trick of all for me has <laughs> is just use a lighter desktop environment like XFCE or Flexbox. And the major one <laughs> is replace spinning Rust drives with SSDs or NVMe drives. You can't go wrong with that. Increase those boot times. <laughs> Makes all the yep. difference in the world. <laughs> I don't know. I definitely got to say a whole lot of that, especially, and I know, listen, the only reason not to have an SSD drive, especially as your boot drive in 2018, is 
because I don't want to. That's a perfectly <laughs> valid reason. I'm not going to judge you for that, but you don't need to come up with excuses. I'm just saying because <laughs> they're wicked cheap. You can get like the Munchkin, Muskin, the source Munchkin. drives. Yeah. 400 megs read write. You can get 120 gig version of those for under 40 American dollars. So, yeah. 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 Awesome. And they don't know. But listen, I bought into the first generation Intel drives and they died. Like firmware updates, wiped them. It was brilliant. Mm. And they, they've come a long way and you're not going to write enough to them to kill them. If I can't, you're probably not. Especially as a boot drive, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, oh, definitely. It, that is the biggest. Uh, it makes the biggest difference in terms of like boot times. You mm -hmm. go from 20, 30 seconds to 10 and uh, like just regular desktop use, if you're just opening whatever is installed into the SSD, everything is just so much faster, like noticeably faster. And if you ever go back to a hard drive after you've had an SSD, it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, those were the dark ages. <laughs> definitely. And you definitely I've have even, that. Oh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm, I've even put them in really old, my old vintage computers, and it makes a G42. huge difference even in that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> you, you might as well, as cheap as they are yeah. these days. I mean, they're definitely yeah. a commodity, but... I mean, I remember going like, oh, that NVMe can't be that much faster than an SSD. Yes, it can. Um, you mm -hmm. go from like <laughs> six second boot times. We're talking to desktop ready to go. A couple of things in that article that it's like, okay, check your startups, people. Do that, mm -hmm. especially uh, if you're on anything that rhymes with canonical because they like to throw a gang of stuff in there. Yes. Stuff like uh, maybe you're just. Uh, cups. There's no reason I should have cups loaded because I don't have, I have printers, but man, come on, really? 2018? Uh, Bluetooth, that gets started up a lot. I just go through your services. There's a lot yep. of stuff in there. I guarantee yeah. you, you're going to find some things <gasps> that you don't need to worry about. Now, using FastApp and setting your mirrors, that's also recommended. That, you know, not that you've that ever been in a situation. That makes updates considerably right. quicker. Right. Yes. It, just <laughs> delaying the uh, the latency between you and the server means all the packages get downloaded considerably mm -hmm. faster. One hundred percent. So let's talk about uh, Scandinavian witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fox. It's on fire. Martin Stransky's. This is from his blog, uh, Firefox Hacking in Fedora. All this business, as we say, is going to be in our show notes. You can go check out the links there. This is the Firefox on Wayland update, which I was like, oh, that's neat. They got Firefox working. I was like, ah, okay, I, I think I kind of knew that was a thing. But now they have WebRTC. There's a patch up and running. And I was like, eh, all right, that's kind of it. using Pipewire. It's like, you, sir, have my attention. Um, Wayland applications are isolated from the desktop, don't have any access to other windowing. And Pipewire supplies the missing functionality along the browser sandbox. So this is all tied in. This is not using X11 compatibility. This is straight up uh, Wayland Firefox WebRTC. It's a roundabout yep. way of doing it, but apparently it works, question mark. And uh, yeah, with Wayland being dedicated to splitting each and every single process from the other, which was something that was kind of needed, and that's one of the reasons that X11 really needed a massive overhaul. Um, it's, uh, yeah, no, that they needed something to act as the middle band or something that they could build into their sandbox to provide this kind of functionality. And WebRTC, it uses a lot of resources. So building Pipewire into the sandbox, the Firefox sandbox. Awesome. Very good idea. Mm -hmm. Very good idea indeed. Also, vSync support and uh, high DPI. Huh. It's almost like we're living in the future. Lies. I don't believe <laughs> yeah. it. Pipewire is a very interesting yes. piece of kit, being able to handle not just audio, but video. And yeah, I'm excited about stuff like that. I will never try yeah. this if, until uh, I get some decent video drivers or I break down and buy an AMD card, Joe. Yeah, well, I believe this might be the first uh, consumer implementation of Pipewire on an application mm -hmm. for Linux. Uh, that's really, really awesome. Uh, it will be the future, replacing Pulse and our uh, video encoding systems and whatnot. <laughs> oh, no, it won't. <laughs> let's, uh, it, let, it, let's see. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be. Uh, right. It, it very well may have 99% of the market. There's still going to be that person out there who's like, Ulsa or die. 
<laughs> oh, there's a lot of people like that. People cling on to Olsa, man. I had to let it go because Pulse Audio begrudgingly, admittedly, has gotten good enough. We use Jack for the interface and stuff like that, but I don't recommend Jack because it is a very cantankerous piece of software. Mm -hmm. um, so, quick mention, uh, something that uh, made Jill and myself kind of go squee. <laughs> Yeah, yes. it's a new Power9 mainboard for Linux uh, desktops. This comes from Reddit. Uh, and uh, yeah, they announced the uh, the Blackbird, which is a micro ATX Power9 motherboard. It's not available yet. I did have a look on their um, website, and they do say it's the perfect companion to the uh, Talos 2 developer machines, which uh, the processor, the low-end processor that goes into that motherboard is... Um, 390 something dollars uh <laughs> considering its power that is mm -hmm. bargain basement pricing yeah it is definitely. it is a quad core uh quad core uh so you're basically paying i7 prices for something that works in the three digits of megahertz but yeah it's power nine so it's you're still paying that premium the early bird early blackbird premium and yeah, we still need to see how much that motherboard is going to cost because I am curious, but the price will dictate just how curious. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is just, yeah, like Ben said earlier, me and him squeed. In May, we had talked about Raptor Computing Systems releasing the Talos 2 Lite workstation for the lowest price you can buy an IBM Power 9 Risk workstation under $15,000. <laughs> now, the low-cost and low-powered Power 9 Blackbird Micro ATX motherboard will soon be available. And this is the first uh, first implementation of uh, Micro ATX motherboard within the server space. Um, all their other motherboards are, are classic extended ATX server motherboards. So that's that's unique in and of itself. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, as Ven, Ven said in the notes, uh, we're hoping that altogether the system might be under $1,000 with the processor and, and all the bells and whistles. Pedro, you see what you've done? Do you see, you see what you've done, man? <laughs> it's not my fault. You, 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 it's Jill. You're rubbing off on Jill. She's stealing my content. No. <laughs> no, but 100%. Definitely, if you can ship this with a chip... Mm -hmm. For under a grand. No then, RAM, no nothing, just the motherboard and the processor. There's a big difference between that and 15. Yeah. Right, I mean, it yeah. puts it into the mm. enthusiast budget price. Definitely. It's something you can save up for and pick up as opposed to, oh, I'm going to buy a really nice used car. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. The, go, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, well, the only disadvantage to this that was sad is it only supports up to an octa-core Mm -hmm. um, power nine processor, which I was kind of sad about, but that, how much you know, they power might... do you need? That's madness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Google, they had a thing yesterday and it was pretty cringeworthy, but one thing that I was interested in, because as I like to say, it's deep space nine with tablets in this house. I got tablets everywhere. I like them. <laughs> Hated them yes. at first. I thought they were stupid until I got one. Then I got a bunch more. They're talking about the pixel slate. First look at Google's new tablet. Doesn't run Android. Nope. Chrome OS, and yeah. I immediately, basically, kind of, sort of, almost totally lost interest. But what really got me, what really caught me off guard was mm -hmm. this critter starts at five ninety nine. dollars yes. That's just to walk into the door. That's just going to get you this slate. How big is this thing? Isn't it like 11 point? 12 point, uh, 12 point ah, 3. 12 inches. See, I so like So you're looking like about this size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the thing. Now, yeah. it's got a resolution of 2,000 by 3,000. One reason I still cling to my Nexus 10. Yes, I was one of the six people that bought the uh, Nexus 10. What was it? It was like 530, 550. It was half a gram. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it still, to this day, I don't see a lot of tablets, 10-inch tablets coming out with the screen resolution of that thing. No. 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 Full 2K. <laughs> Uh, five ninety nine to walk in the door. The reason that's kind of an issue with me is I have experienced Chrome OS without a keyboard. It's not a good mm -hmm. experience. I didn't have a good time, and neither will you. Nowadays, it's acceptable. Mm, yeah, I've, we're talking like last month, Pedro. <laughs> 
hey, I have a Chromebook. <laughs> it's yeah. perfectly usable as a tablet. <laughs> you got low standards, yeah. buddy. Um, one ninety nine for the Google keyboard. That's good. That fits. It. That's like their weird looking one, which is kind of mm-hmm. sexy looking. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. And yeah. one forty nine for the, your bog standard one and the stylus, which might be a thing. That's ninety nine dollars. Um, another thing. That kind of made me go, meh, really, is uh, it's x86 based. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Chrome Surface. It's yeah. Google's entry into the Surface market. It's like, oh, okay, here's uh, like a 12-inch uh, sur- uh, Surface Pro competitor that's got, it runs Chrome OS, which means it runs all the Android apps and their cats. Uh, it uh, has a 3000 by 2000 pixel screen. I like the aspect ratio. The three by two aspect ratio looks amazing. Amazing. I just don't like the price. It, yeah. 600 for the low end version. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although what was nice is in the in the video on the on the Verge um, article, uh, they talked about how what a good good job of converting Chrome OS from tablet mode to laptop mode when detaching and attaching the keyboard, and um, that was one of the issues that that Ven had brought about up about you know using the keyboard with having to use the keyboard with uh, Chrome OS and using and then having to use it as a touch interface wasn't that great. So apparently they've done a pretty good job at. At improving that and yeah <laughs> I, I say good on them and I, I think I'm probably going to still wait until I don't need a flagship uh, Plex and Netflix player yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I waited until that Chromebook dro- dropped to like 200 pounds instead mm-hmm. of the 250 yes. it usually goes for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So who else read this as we're joking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, this is this is this is cool, but to be expected, Microsoft is joining Hacktoberfest Hacktoberfest 2018. And you can submit one pull request to any Microsoft open source project and get a Hacktoberfest shirt. And that's in contrast to the five pull requests needed for the other open source projects on GitHub to receive a Hacktoberfest t-shirt that we talked about two weeks ago for the Hacktoberfest. So Microsoft's trying to make it a lot easier for, you know, certain reasons. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure to, to help increase uh, the uh, pull request and push requests mm-hmm. of their their projects on the GitHub. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I was just, I'm sorry. I, it's just that picture, open source, open source, and Clippy's in the middle, and it's not on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's... That's I guess that's one way of uh, getting those numbers up, because... You know, further yeah. inspection of this image, it, it's, it's a VS code, and it's like, Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would you like me to help you? Yeah, okay. I, I can see Flippy <laughs> popping up. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of surprised that no one's made a plugin for a Visual Studio Code with Clippy. But yeah, that's one way of getting the numbers up for this Hacktoberfest, which is the first one that, uh, well, mm-hmm. it's the first one that Microsoft <laughs> is in possession of GitHub. Yes. Uh, so I guess throwing a lot of money and a lot of free stuff and a lot of publicity at it, it's a good way to, you know, Bring those numbers back up after everyone went to GitLab. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yes. It's with this, you know, as much as I dislike Microsoft, I personally can't see anything wrong with this, but you might want to sweeten the pot, man. People are not clamoring to get Microsoft t shirts. It's t right? shirts. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, how about they sweeten the pot with, I don't know, 60,000 patents? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They dropped the big one, uh, or at least part of the big one. Uh, they dropped uh, 60,000 patents on the uh, Open Invention Network. And basically what the Open Invention Network does is like open collaboration and patent holders uh, have to agree to the we're not going to go out and aggressively pursue our patents for money. It's basically you throw your patents in there and say, okay, this is what we did. You can use it. And that is awesome because up until now, uh, the OIN had 
uh, about 1,300 uh, patents that they were, you know, that they let their members share. Now they have 61,300. <laughs> so that's, yes. that's mm. a huge leap. And the big one, of course, is uh, the XFAT one, which uh, people were saying, <laughs> okay, so uh, how about that uh, XFAT patent and the money that you've been making off of Linux-related projects? Well, one of the people at the Conservancy... Uh, and one of the people that helped Samsung uh, get the source code uh, in a open source license for XFAT uh, has kind of pointed out that, yes, that's great. That's 60,000 uh, patents that they've put on the OIN, but that doesn't include the XFAT one. The XFAT one is not included oh. because of a teeny tiny little loophole, which is it wasn't upstreamed to the Linux kernel. So oh. it's not included yes. in the we will not pursue this for money <laughs> agreement thing. There's a fly. <laughs> That'll teach it. Hey, man, you know, <laughs> I saw this earlier. I think it was Darkwing DW uh, in Discord that pointed this out earlier. I guess it's time to schedule that snowball fight at my place. Um, <laughs> and yeah, the Android thing, I I don't like the Android thing, but you also got to go, really, Google? Why did you do something that was patent encumbered in the first place? You know, you got to throw that back <laughs> to that. Uh, 60,000 yeah. patents, that's cool. How about, you know, here's the real question. Um, what is it going to take after this, this show of goodwill, from evil, evil Redmond. Uh, 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 what more do they yeah. have to do to earn our trust and make me wear a Microsoft T-shirt with Clippy that's on fire? Um, yes. I guess releasing the XFAT thing. <laughs> you know, for me, if they would, I, I, I would trust is a strong word. I wouldn't trust them <laughs> if they would just release old Skype, the client server 4.0, the what it was when you purchased it. The one that worked. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could release that, that would be awesome because that was a really good piece of kit and the silk codex, neat, and you've just turned it into a pile of poo on everything. So it's, it's not even Linux that's bad now. The Windows and Mac clients have caught up with the Linux client and being equally poo. Yep. Aww. <laughs> Well, of of course, and as everyone suspects, this this includes most of their entire uh, most of their patent portfolio, uh, but not Windows and desktop application code, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so and you it, know, <laughs> it's one of those things. Typical. I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't see this happening anytime soon. And yeah. I, now I'm waiting. What exactly is in the other shoe, and when's it going to drop? When's it going to drop? Yeah. <laughs> and again, as we've been talking about almost every week here on LWW, Microsoft is becoming a services company. And its real goal right now is their cloud, is their Azure platform. So mm -hmm. they want everyone on you know, using Linux. So it makes sense that they've released a lot of this code. Uh, but if, you know, there's still some things that aren't released, that's not good either. <laughs> yeah. Mm, that's the thing. Um, baby steps, baby steps, maybe. Yes. I mean, uh, this was a huge baby step. Mm -hmm. Don't yes, get us wrong. Was. This was yeah. huge. It's just yeah. that people already pointed out, yeah, that thing you've been holding over the Linux uh, development community for the longest time and making a ton of money off of. Well, Android. Yeah, how about you Android, drop that? Google, <laughs> another giant corporation that's soulless. Yeah, but it's not just Android. It's Ladies also and gentlemen, Linux. what you're witnessing right here is somebody not willing to let go of his favorite favorite whipping item. Um, yes. <laughs> but thanks to you, that's right, all 250, yeah, 111 patrons. Ooh, making this show awesome. possible. That Ooh. is awesome because we get to shout you out every week. Uh, thank you. 100%. And Darkwing, we just talked about it earlier. You, don't want, you get two mentions because you entered a new realm. Up to Spledge to 
the Death Note level, which is awesome. Yes. That's going to get you access to uh, Jill. I, I know you actually listen to it every now yeah. and then. Our uh, production meeting that we do yes. the hour before the show every Saturday in podcast yes. form. Because as a patron, you get a custom RSS feed that it, it's just yours. It's specialized just for you. Is is that worth listening to or you just do it because you're like you're a sadist? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it. And actually for me, because you guys discuss things that are happening on the LGC network that we don't necessarily discuss on, on, uh, LW to W. So, <laughs> that, that so, and it's, neat. it's a lot of fun and you guys discuss uh, movies and TV and, and it's not, it's not just a, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the meat of <laughs> that particular yeah. content. <laughs> no, you're, you're letting them know that we completely go off topic immediately. <laughs> uh, yeah. New series of Doctor Who, so we bring back our temporary whenever we think about doing it series called Game of Who. That's live at 9 p.m. Every night we're going to be bringing in people in Discord. That's another thing that you get access to is our Discord. Come hang out with us, and you can watch me help a room full of school children like I did this morning. This is a true story, and um, that's going to be out to everything, and you get early access to a gang of stuff, but most importantly, you let us be loud, live, independent, no ads, no commercials, it's kind of brilliant. I want to thank everyone yep. for that. Uh, Pedro, schedule. What did we do this week and what do we have coming up? Oh, yeah. Uh, this week uh, we did uh, on Tuesday, yesterday, uh, Orcs Must Die 2. Yeah, it was myself and yourself then. Uh, we mm. uh, got together and yeah. we shot some orcs and we laid down a bunch of traps. It was a trap! Yeah. Actually, now that I think of it, we didn't drop a single one of those during the stream, so <laughs> that was a missed opportunity. Uh, up next, uh, on uh, Thursday, we will have uh, Jordan and uh, the Sandman. Canada goes mm -hmm. to space in Borderlands, the pre-sequel. And uh, on Friday, there will be apparently one last Jack before uh, Jackbox 5 drops. Yes. And of course, on Saturday, mm -hmm. the big show. Linux Gamecast Weekly. So, yeah, no, you lot give us a work week. That's five days where we do something for you, with you. That's oh, come awesome. On, mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> well, we were going to do it anyway. You guys just help finance it so we're able to do it like at a creepy level. So somebody, like a passerby is like, wait, that looks like professional. It's like, no, no, no. Nope, not at all. <laughs> we just got cool tools to do it with. And we... Uh, yeah, we're going to keep doing it because we're just getting yep. warmed up with this and having a great time. Uh, so, Slice the Pie? Oh, mm. yes. Yeah. Ooh, this is, that's a nice ooh, towel. <laughs> that's, yes, very nice. I want one. <laughs> so this is a posh enclosure for your Raspberry Pi. This is the Argon 1 case, which is an alum aluminum. <laughs> Excuse Aluminium. Me. <laughs> Aluminum, yes. Okay, it's an al aluminum alloy case that is sleek looking, has a small footprint, easy access to GPIO, has good heat dissipation, great cable management, and a proper shutdown button. Awesome, woohoo! And it comes with all the bells and whistles akin to its larger computer case, brethren, of a micro ATX or ATX computer, which is really awesome. So it's about time we've we've upgraded it in the world for a Raspberry Pi with a proper case. And yeah. it's only 20 bucks. And what's cool to me, all this is missing is the RGB LEDs, which you can case mod later, of course. That's all it needs. <laughs> that, that's the final touch. A, Jill, you're a monster. B, <laughs> um, nine days left on their Kickstarter. I think they're going to get it because yeah. they got 36000 out of a pledged. Um, they needed five grand to put mm -hmm. this out. Clicky magnets, big selling point. You can play with those and lose them. Yeah. Th this no, is... uh, this is really awesome because uh, yeah. the final mm -hmm. price they said that it was going to be twenty bucks or fifteen pounds or what have you. But if you uh, want to back them on Kickstarter right now, you can get it for slightly cheaper than that. So yeah, if you plan to pick one up, might as well. Uh, Look at that! You know. It's even got the proper <laughs> shutdown switch that you can yes. play. Yeah. In. Yeah. <laughs> And the shutdown so, switch just runs a script in, in mm -hmm. Raspbian to turn off mm -hmm. the pie. Mm -hmm. I That's will a, absolutely be picking one of these up once they're out proper. <laughs> Sounds Me like too. a plan. Um, <laughs> so if you want to get a hold to us, we're going to wrap down, get a little bit of feedback. Uh, 
what can they do, Pedro? Can they uh, just walk outside, yell at cloud, and we'll hear it? Is that how it works? Uh, if you, uh, well, if they live anywhere near uh, one of us, then yes, that will work. Uh, if not, the best way to do it is to go to linuxgamecast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form. There's nothing to it. Just make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box. And of course, uh, Google might ask you to train their bots as it's off to do. Uh, it's, uh, oh, they didn't ask that time. Uh, it's, Sucker. yeah. That's the best way to uh, get in touch with us. Of course, if you're a Patreon, uh, you can just drop us a comment on the post on the patrons, and uh, uh, we will be more than happy to feature it right here. Chances are we may be able to see your um, YouTube comments. Not that we get a lot of them. It's just that the notifications don't really work if someone else happens to click that instead of the button that's right next to it. Well, here's the real problem, too. Here's, here's the real problem, Jules. Pedro checks them. <laughs> And even yeah. if there's a comment, he doesn't put them in the show notes. And so I don't know they're there until I like go back and check. <laughs> I actually yeah. don't check them again. The two times that uh, I've clicked that button is because if you mention Pedro was in a right YouTube there. comment, if you mention Pedro in a YouTube comment, go, go, go try it out. It'll be eight to 12 seconds before you get a reply. Yeah. But he doesn't check YouTube comments. Not that fast. <laughs> uh, no, it's definitely a cool thing. Also, if you are working on something made of awesome, you're developing mm -hmm. an open source project, or if you know, like your neighbor's friend's cousin's roommate has an open source project, and they'd like to come on the show and tell the world about it, do it. Yes. Give us please. a ring. Use that contact mm -hmm. button. Send us some information, and we would like to have a chat with you. So we only got yes. one this week, but it's a long one, and mm -hmm. it's from the Sildad. Indeed, and so that says, well, it seems Microsoft is finally seeing the light and feels like becoming a floss Jedi. Bold claim. Oh, wait, it's only MS-DOS 1.25 and 2.0. Ah, it was sarcasm. Thoughts, projections, wishes? Personally, I'd like them to do just the same until Windows 98 SE, at least. Now that would be a good sign. Here it comes, <laughs> uh, here it comes off, here it comes of as petty to be. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's... I agree, Sildat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Having the source code to Windows 98 SE yeah. would see a fork re-release of it by the community. Yes. As... Mm. Mm. <laughs> also, uh, they would... Would they be releasing, mm -hmm. since the, it's the SE version, would they be releasing the source code to that particular it, version of the NT kernel? NT kernel, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you could see that. I mean, I think the biggest reason you won't see that is plain and simple. Shame. They don't want anyone to see it. Um, yeah. <laughs> what you just brought up there is very interesting. I, yes, that would become a... It's like everyone would come flying back to nine retro gaming stations and stuff mm -hmm. like that would probably see massive improvements, but then you would see stuff, people shoehorning newer versions of direct X and yeah, yeah, <laughs> it would get a little squirrely. I don't, I, I wouldn't plan on that, yeah. but yeah. DOS is interesting. I, I thought yeah. that was good. You know, again, baby steps. That's something we talked about last week. So yeah. And I had mentioned last week, I'd like to see DOS 6.22 up there because that mm -hmm. was the mm -hmm. most popular version of DOS and it, it lasted Oh, for years. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I I I like that idea. I like the idea of just yeah. okay, Windows ninety eight, Windows ninety five, just open source mm -hmm. that. They're they're never going to do that, but just open source that and let the community have at. See what comes yeah. out the other side. I would love to see <laughs> that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to bounce out of here, and I just realized that hey, you know, we were talking before the show. It's like, what did I forget to do? Um, well, you were saying what did the what, credits? What did, that's right. <laughs> the credits. <laughs> so we're, we're just going to bring Cue in the some music. music. <laughs> and hey, I think Boom. the old credits, even from last week. Ah, okay. It's a number off, so but this, it'll do. The, this time it'll say Jordan Swang instead of Jill Bryant, <laughs> like, like it did on the, <laughs> the last Linux game cast. So there we go. <laughs> Get the right ones. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. I hope you learned something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one comes here expecting to learn anything. I did Aww. one time. You yeah. broke me from Thank it. you. <laughs> Thank you, Chat Realm. Thank you, producers and our executive producers. We love you. 
<laughs> Absolutely. This show was brought to you because you said, yes, we would like to see an extra show. And yeah. there it is. 139 episodes later. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. Bye, everyone. We love you. <laughs>